seven, so. Oh, I see it somewhere. You got it. Unless there's other questions that you have that you don't understand. This is the application of relativity, that all things are relative. You can't know exactly the way things work. You can only know what you can receive. There's a gadget that scientists use to see if there's an electromagnetic field here. It's a kind of a... They also have a gadget they lower from an airplane. It's a, like a big disc with an electric current going around in a circle. There's a lot of iron under the land. It slows up the electric current. So instead of going around geologically looking for iron, the airplane drops this down and it flies over the earth and it tells you where the iron is. Do you understand? By a current moving around in a coil. And it's called a magnetometer. That's how they know whether... In the old days they used to dig down, find metal, and say, this is a good place for it. Nowadays, with a prism, a certain type of prism, arranged a certain way, if you aim it at a star, it tells you there's no oxygen on that star, no nitrogen, no water. The, the prism, the color bands, tell you what there is on that planet. It was discovered accidentally. When the Germans made airplanes that were lighter and stronger, they didn't know what it was made of, so they heat the metal so it's bright, white hot, and run it through a prism, they get a color band, and the color band says 2% magnesium, 1% carbon, cobalt, you know what I mean? It's called spectral analysis. So we can turn a spectrum on anything today, and if we heat it so it's white hot, we can tell what it contains. That's how they know there's no air on the moon before they ever went there. But normally, how do they know there's no air on the moon? They've never been there. There are other ways, but they don't know about spectroscopes. You know, spectral analysis. A lot of people don't know about those things, so they, how the hell do they know? My opinion is just as good as theirs. They don't look into it and say, how do they know? They speculate, you know what I mean? And so that's why we have so much trouble with people, because they do not have a common way of seeking information. They say, well, if you ask me, I think my opinion is just as good as yours. Good. So people feel they want to feel equal to you. They say, that's your opinion. Now I'm going to give you mine. See? So they think one opinion is as good as another. And that's valid amongst people that don't know how to check things out. They should say, I wonder how they know there's no water on the moon. But wondering that, they don't go to their computer and say, how do people know that? I don't know if your computer will handle that, but your computer will tell you every phase of metals with a memory. If you know, if you put in metals with a memory, or you put in materials with a memory, you'll get more than metals with a memory. If you put in, what is memory? You know what I mean? Well, that's another question altogether. We don't ask those questions because we're not brought up to ask such questions. We're brought up, if you get money, you can buy anything, a Rolls Royce or a big house with 40 rooms. So most aims are for money not scientific instruments. If you wonder why, why do people only think of making money? Because they can buy any car, any house, pay off people, you know what I mean? Money is a symbol and it can get you anything you want. But if you study chemistry, you might learn about chemicals, but you can't afford to live in a nice house. That's why people are money oriented. Not because they're bad or greedy because money gives them what they want, and without it they can't have what they want. Is that real clear? It's rewarding to people. Now, if helping people is rewarding you instead of money, that's different. But you'll be abused by it. You'll have to drive a car that breaks down because you don't have the money to buy a car that doesn't break down. A brand new Mercedes will last longer than the average car. But you can't afford that. And if you use magnetic braking, it'll last longer. But you can't afford it. But people with money said, what's the best braking? said, I'll take two. 
you know what I mean? And uh, how do I make my house fireproof? You do this, you do that, see? And they can afford it. Without money, you're pissed on by people. Sleeping in the street, you're broke. Everybody says, the guy is a bum. I met what they call bums that were so well read that they didn't want any part of the system. They lived in poverty. I think I told you about the guy in Haiti with a shirt made of nothing but patches. I couldn't tell which is the real shirt because he had so many patches. And he was well informed in semantics, but he was, if somebody, the shirt he wore looked like a guy put a hand grenade in it and blew it up. There were holes all over it and torn, and he still buttoned it up because that's all he had. But he, would, he loved to read. And he was very well informed, but he, in, in what he read, but he was pissed on by everybody. And I talked to him for hours. He was bright as hell, but he didn't, he couldn't identify with being part of his, the world. You know, so they were considered bums, and I considered politicians bums, and people that designed bombers bums. Do you understand? And the people that made the atom bombs dangerous. Because they gave it to people that were not wise enough to use them. They couldn't take that into account. But they love the challenge of solving the problem. But they don't, you don't, you know, even the Bible says, cast ye not pearl before swine. You know what that means? If you give a pig a pearl, it doesn't say, gee, that's great, thank you. Uh, if you give an atom bomb to an undeveloped country, they'll blast the hell out of people they disagree with. And they'll poison the earth. They don't care about that. They're not wise enough to use it. That's what casting not pearl before swine means to me. Don't give people atom bombs. Don't give people bombers unless they learn to live together in peace. Then you give them airplanes and other spectroscopes and things like that. So when they educate kids, and spectra, spectral analysis and magnetometers and all the things they don't know exist. They will not make their own conclusions. They'll say, let's put a spectrometer on that and try to find out. They don't even think that way today. They think, man will always be greedy, no matter what you do. You can say that man has always been greedy due to scarcity or fear of loss. A man can have a million dollars and still steal because he wants to secure his position. He wants to make damn sure even if the banks fail, he has money buried under the mattress or under the ground in the trunk in the backyard, you know. People are insecure because they've known banks to fail and all their money that they put in the banks is gone because the bank has called other bankers and said, hey, we're going to sell out, we're going to close down in three months, take your money out to their friends in the banking business. They did that first, so there was nothing left. Even though a guy worked all his life and saved up $800,000, when the banks failed, they were lined up outside the banks demanding their money. I said, we don't have it. And they killed themselves, the people, because they felt they let their families down. So the people that don't put money in the banks, they have a locker in banks where you can put cash. And it, you get to no interest, but you, that can't be touched by the banks. They can't invest it. But uh, that became a form of security. But if you put a million dollars in the bank, if you did that, within and you get interest, you get about 50000 a year interest. So you don't have to worry about anything. You're going to live 50,000 a year as long as your million stays there. And that takes, puts it on the back of other people. Yes. We, we should, I should go down and figure Yes. Know. Okay. That was the last portion of a talk on the subject of relativity, and he covers some other things in there as well. If you'd like to hear more of that, as well as other lectures in audio format, please go to the Twitter page that we just set up where we will post links to more new material, including answers to questions and more current update briefs. So I will put a link to the Twitter below. In addition to the Venus Project tours, which are given on scheduled Saturdays, Jock continues to give 
new lectures almost daily in which he covers all areas of social designs, human behavior, and more in-depth issues that are important to consider and understand in learning about this direction and way of thinking. We're also doing our best to get these talks edited and released onto DVD and expect to have about 15 to 20 new lectures available as soon as we can. So if you check on thevenusproject.com, you go to the store, check that out in the next hopefully few weeks there will be some new material available there. So thanks for watching and also the Venus Project is appreciative of everybody that's out there in the trenches talking about these ideas that are not so easy to talk about with quote normal people. Um, but as Jock always says, we've got a tough job ahead of us, but I'd rather have a tough job than to go along with the system.